Welcome to my east side patio. I've got coffee. There we go. Rift Valley Academy alumni. Big mug. That's my coffee. I've got a seat here and I invite you to sit down. Take a seat with me here. Welcome, we're gonna talk about dragon's blood versus cinnamon. What has that got to do with our orchids? Let me know what it would be that I could serve you at this point in time to make this little chit chat a little bit more enjoyable. All right, I hope that you've settled. Let me just stir my coffee. This is good stuff. I have to sit on the east side with you today because it is extremely blustery on the rest of my patio and dragon's blood in its own right is sensitive to light. And for that reason, my bottle is blacked out, has nothing to do with the color of the dragon's blood. Also in my case, it's in Spanish, sangre de drago. Anyway, if I sound as if I'm reading, that is because I will be reading. I have notes from yesteryear. The first time I came across dragon's blood and its use for plants was through Ed's orchids. And that got me into the Google and I started to research dragon's blood for plants, which there is not much out there about, but it works for Ed's orchids. And I thought it's gonna work for me too. What is dragon's blood? In my notes from yesteryear, I have that dragon's blood is a natural plant resin. It is dark red in color which is part of what gives dragon's blood its name. The other part of the name giver is the resin is extracted from many different tropical trees species called dragon trees. And these may come from the plant groups Croton, Pterocarpus, Daemonorops, or Dracaenia. The plant resin has been used for thousands of years for distinct purposes. And there are records of its use among the ancient Greeks and Romans, as well as India, China, and the Middle East. Some of its uses are for health, but it has also been used as dye, paint, incense, or for spiritual purposes. It has a strong, sweet fragrance, not unlike spiced vanilla. Dragon blood products from the Dracaenia and Demonorops genus are the most common and widely used today. What is cinnamon? Cinnamon is a spice obtained from the inner bark of several tree species from the genus Cinnamomum. It is mainly used as an aromatic condiment and flavoring additive in a wide variety of cuisines from sweet to savory dishes, cookies, cakes, teas, and coffee. <laughs> Cinnamon is the name for several species of trees and the commercial spice products that some of them produce. How is dragon's blood used? Today, its most common use is for digestive health. It was formerly ascribed as a cure-all, which included speeding up wound healing, cuts, scrapes, and all those good things that children do at a very young age. <laughs> we used it in Kenya as a substitute for iodine. Iodine was more expensive. We used dragon's blood. But to this day, it is also still found in some natural dyes, paints, and varnishes. How is cinnamon used? Mainly for cooking, flavoring as a spice, but also has a long history of use in traditional medicine as a digestive aid. What does dragon's blood do? It may offer some protection against or even kill pathogens like bacteria, fungi, or viruses. Dragon's blood from the Dracaenia cinnabari has shown to have substantial antimicrobial properties. What does cinnamon do? Cinnamon is thought to have many medicinal and soothing properties and is used a lot in Chinese herbal medicines. The distinctive smell and flavor of cinnamon comes from the essential oils contained in the bark called cinnamaldehyde. It is this cinnamaldehyde which displays antiviral, antibacterial, and antifungal properties. It also has anti-inflammatory effects because it also contains large amounts of polyphenol antioxidants which can help protect the body from disease. The antioxidants in cinnamon have been found to have anti-inflammatory effects. And everything I just talked about right now had to do with the humans and our perspective and how we use this stuff. But what about for the orchids? The main effects of eliminating and killing of pathogens like bacteria, fungi, etc., is what makes dragon's blood so interesting and useful when we see issues appear on our orchids like rot, crown rot, sealing off cuts, and other wounds on our orchids. 
Once again, I'm referencing everything regarding human consumption and out of the perspective of human use and application. But what about the orchids? For cinnamon, the key here as well is the antiviral, antibacterial and antifungal properties. And that is what makes cinnamon so interesting and beneficial to our orchids. For cuts, rot or any other wounds we may have induced on our orchids if we cut into the rhizome. The desiccating effect on the wounds dries them out faster than if we were to leave them to air dry, limiting the chance for any pathogens to enter and multiply and possibly cause more damage. So by the sounds of it, they both have the same attributes with one exception. One is in liquid form, ideal for the orchids, and one is in powder form. So this brings me to the point of when to use one as opposed to the other. Dragon's blood is perfect for breaks and cracks in an orchid stem where it is difficult to apply cinnamon. For example, I have my neos here. You see here, it would be very difficult for cinnamon to take hold. This is a neo that I have and I induce crown rot. Cinnamon in there, it would be impossible to get it right. It's also a desiccant to the roots. And if the cinnamon then dissipates to the roots, those roots will desiccate. So anywhere where there's a tight squeeze in joints that you cannot get to and put cinnamon in properly because it would spill over and compromise roots, that is where dragon's blood in liquid form comes in. I'm not saying that I've rescued the crowns on my two little neos, but they're looking much better than they did six months ago. So that is where the crown was compromised right there and it started to grow again. And what I see here is just the extension of the rot probably growing out. So far, I cannot say that this one is compromised. It is still growing. Dragon's blood also stains quite, quite badly. But let me show you on the example of a Dendrobium berryoda cane what I mean. Little tight nooks and crannies. Let's just say this is the crown of your orchid that has been compromised. Let's just say down here, we've got lots and lots of roots. The orchid is in a pot. The crown is compromised. Now we're gonna pour cinnamon on that. That is very, very difficult, but not so with dragon's blood. Because with dragon's blood, I can very, very easily target where I want the liquid to go and the properties will take hold. It'll go into the crevices. It'll seep and leak in where cinnamon would not reach. And it will take care of that cut and it will stop any rot from continuing. The question is then, does the orchid have the strength to recover from the rot and then maybe produce a keiki or continue to grow if this were a case of a dendrobium berryoda but I'm just using it as an example to show you how deep I can get dragon's blood in liquid form down there. And with cinnamon, I would have a tough job while the orchid is in the pot, plus trying to protect the roots. For a rhizome cut, a clean cut, somewhere where you're not going to be compromising the roots, cinnamon powder is awesome. It'll dry it, everything off very, very quickly. Let's just say this is our rhizome cut here, another cane from a Dendrobium berryoda. Let's just say we did a rhizome cut. And now we want to seal it with some cinnamon before we pot it up. And we just dab it into the cinnamon and the desiccating agent will take care of the rest. Also antibacteria, antifungal, and all that good stuff that dragon's blood has but in liquid form. So the difference between the two is obviously one is liquid, one is powder, but for their uses and the results that they can produce, they do exactly the same thing with the exception that you can get into nooks and crannies with the liquid dragon's blood and seal off any cuts and wounds that are easy accessible, not close to any roots, which could be compromised with a powder form. So let's just take this example. We have a beautiful orchid in the pot. We have one direction of growth. We want to encourage a second direction of growth, but we don't want to unpot the orchid 
and cut her, divide her. We want to leave it in the pot and encourage a second direction of growth while the orchid is still in the pot. So we would make a rhizome cut, let's just say here, hypothetically, down here. And you wouldn't cut the whole rhizome through, just partial to trigger the hormones of the orchid to say, whoops, I've got damage. We're going to move on and start another lead. Well, this is a tough situation. You've got beautiful roots growing. You've got a tiny little space to get cinnamon in, but using dragon's blood right here to seal off and protect the wound, the cut that you've made has the same effect and will avoid any pathogens or bacteria of spreading into that cut, causing further damage. Perfect example of where dragon's blood is much more effective and much easier to control as opposed to cinnamon, which could compromise the roots in the pot. We have a lot of similarities for these two products. For us as humans, human consumption, as well as for the orchids. The only difference being one is safer, in my opinion, than the other, depending on what it is that you're trying to protect from pathogens and bacteria entering. And for me, that is the dragon's blood, as opposed to the cinnamon. I can really target where I want the dragon's blood to go. The cinnamon might blow all over the place, like on a breezy day like today. And that is another reason why we're on the east side. It's not as breezy, but if I were to treat orchids today from cuts, make divisions, etc., I would be using dragon's blood. Do not be put off by the fact that dragon's blood is a wet component as opposed to cinnamon being dry. Therefore, the cuts will dry faster. The properties within the dragon's blood act in exactly the same way as the properties of the cinnamon. One just seems to be a bit quicker to dry because it is already in powder form. The other one will literally seep into the tissue. The tissue will absorb the dragon's blood for a few more little layers of cells than the cinnamon does because of the capillary action. I hope that this was informative and that I could make it understood as to why one it works better in some cases than the other one, even though they both do exactly the same. So if you have any questions regarding what I was talking about today, you can stay in your chair. I will refresh your beverage, but I will switch off the camera so that you and I can just have a chat. In this case, unfortunately, it will have to be in the comments, but I do look forward to having that chat with you in the comments below. I want to say thank you very, very much for joining me on my patio for our little chit chat regarding dragon's blood as opposed to cinnamon. Have yourselves a wonderful day. Your time is so very much appreciated. I hope to see you again in the next video. Please stay safe and take care. Bye.